All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of the Connected Engineering Podcast today with a very special guest, Tobias Wigand. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Josef. As always, what we'd like to do, of course, we'll talk about Connected Engineering again, but more about transforming workflow agility and how can engineers benefit from it. But maybe for the start, can you give people a background? Um, who is Tobias in the first place and what are you doing at Sunera? Yeah, sure. So um, basically, I'm have a, having a mechanical engineering background, worked more than a decade in the automotive industry. And there I, I ramped up various departments, really from material development to CAE, uh, did a lot of body and wide engineering, but also led at the end um, a digitalization department. And that was also um, the moment when I came in contact with Sonera three or four years back. And uh, yeah, I just fell in love with this approach. So I joined Sonera a little bit more than one year back and working there now as a customer success manager. And as a customer success manager, I'm responsible for supporting our customers to fulfill all our joint tr strategic targets. Mm -hmm. Give you maybe a, uh, a brief intro to how does a day of a customer success engineer like yourself look like? Uh, this is uh, totally different from day to day, um, but in the most of the cases, there are a lot of meetings uh, with customers where we look into um, different use cases, um, yeah, think a little bit about, okay, where we can still um, bring more of this connected engineering approach, which departments we can connect or which disciplines we can connect um, to the workflows we already have. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have worked in the industry before. What is the difference with, across maybe industries or different departments of uh, wanting to achieve something and actually implementing something? Like, I think there's an enormous difference between those two. Maybe you could differentiate them and actually, like, how can you over overcome that bottleneck, I would say, to actually do it at the end of the day. Yes. So um, if you think a little bit about, especially if you are, if, especially if you think about connected engineering, then it sounds like a huge topic. And there are two types in this world. So one personality always try to change everything at once. So they prepare a lot and then they push it into the organization. And then there's these other type. They say, okay, let's start small, taking step after step, and then uh, slightly push this transformation um, yeah, a little bit forward. And these are the two different types. I'm a personal fan of starting small, taking the first steps, learn from the steps, and then continuously move on. It's like kind of this divide and conquer approach, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, where do you see the current challenges, maybe the status quo of engineering work in general? Maybe if we talk about sequential workflows versus like the more optimized workflows, like where do you see the big difference and where do you see maybe the future of engineering moving towards? Yes. So in the past, or if you look into the pro typical product development processes um, of the, yeah, big traditional organizations, then they usually have several milestones and you work towards this milestone. For an example, a CAT department creates a new design and then at this specific milestone, there's a design freeze. It hands it over to the CEE department. There happens all the, the meshing, simulation, the result evaluation, and then the result comes back. But for the CAT department, there's a six week, eight week, maybe three months gap uh, while they have to wait to get this uh, feedback. And what we're seeing, um, especially in the automotive industry with um, the new OEMs, for sure, they have a more lean organization because they're smaller, but they try to break down this, this silos mm -hmm. and work more in an agile approach and try to avoid this um this milestones and iterate on the during the product development process and getting instant feedback and this just um increase speed and reduce um the time to market yeah um because you've worked in the industry toby i would like to get some insights from you especially for the audience so we would think for example big automotive oems that are like modern they have the latest technology and whatnot but sometimes that's not the case where do you see like is the problem in the industry nowadays to maybe not adopting technologies like Sunera? 
Um, I wouldn't say that they are not adopting. It's more like what we see is also in this um, traditional organization that uh, they start in uh, some departments and start to use uh, Scenario or um, a general connected engineering approach. And then they, they slightly bring it um, to new departments. Um, at the end, for sure, sometimes it could go faster because it also means a little bit of a new mindset. And yeah, we all know uh, change can be hard. Mm -hmm. No one really likes change and change some, sometimes takes time. So what's our job then? is to really showcase the value so that they can feel the connected engineering approach, that they can feel the advantages the system has. And then change is much more easier. Definitely. Where do you see like, well, was this aha moment for some of the people you've worked with in the past where they were in the beginning more like, okay, I'm a bit hesitant. I don't want to adopt maybe Scenera to the point where they're like, okay, I get it. That makes a lot of sense. And we would love to actually use the software. Yeah, so the best thing for me is if you have real case scenarios. So means, or I highlighted this um, very often, we start in um, yeah, smaller departments and very often these are the innovation departments and they do pretty cool stuff. But at the end, they are the departments who develop the, the product at the end and we need to convince them. So the best aha moment you can have on this journey is really if you have a use case in this department and this delivers value to them, for example, if they can reduce their effort by 20%, but by 30%, if they have less meetings, which means, okay, at the end of the day, they can focus much more on innovation. And yeah, Yusuf, you're an engineer, I'm an engineer who likes to fill out reports, who likes to have meetings. We want to do, we want to develop crazy stuff, right? Exactly. <laughs> and that's where also the aha moment comes at the end when people understand, okay, we can focus again on this crazy innovative stuff. Definitely. Um, we talked about this mindset shift a little bit, Toby, a couple of seconds ago. Where does the mindset shift have to be in terms of the, this paradigm shift? I mean, Moritz talked in the first episode about connected engineering, what it is. But can you talk about the mindset shift, the paradigm that people have to understand or grasp the concept? Yeah, this, this question is not, not that easy to answer. So mindset shift, it always comes from experience something. And I already mentioned this a little bit. So you need to be open for sure. This is the entry ticket. We need our customer needs. So someone who says, okay, I'm open. I want to try out something new, but at the end, the mindset shift, it just can happen with success stories within your organization. That means you have to find exactly these use cases where the connected approach has the maximum impact. And with that, the trust comes into the organization. And with that, it's much easier to find more open-minded uh, people or break down um, this restrictions, this fear of trying out something new. Yeah. Could you give us some examples of projects that you have been working on? Of course, not top secret projects, but when we talk about specific, we talked about these aha moments, you know, like uh, faster development cycles, agility mm. itself, and et cetera. Maybe some examples from your end. Yeah, I, I have two, I would say I would like to mention and I would start with one uh, which fits a little bit to what I told uh, before. So it's really the connection between CAD and CEE. So there was one of our customers and an engineering service provider, they won a project, a project at a new customer. So, and if you know the industry for sure, there's a lot of things you have to fulfill till you win the project, but at the end, very often money decides. So um, they had not much budget to deliver this project and the department lead struggled a little bit and then asked the digitalization department for help. And what they did, they implement, implemented exactly this automated CEE workflow. So where 
Now the CAD engineer just needs to press a button and gets a result um, out of his uh, design. And with that, they could do much more iterations um, in the same um, period of time. The CAD engineer got, received immediate feedback on his design. And yeah, so co he could make much better decision. And at the end, what was the result out of it? They saved 30% of the uh, time, what I usually need for developing this um, in the CAD department. It was not because the CAD engineer has less work. The utilization of the CAD engineer was much higher. That was where the CAD saving came from. They saved 25% in the CAE department. And what was pretty interesting that also the project management saved a lot of time. So 10%, 15%, because he had less to coordinate. And at the end, it was a 20% savings um, on the budget, which led to a good uh, margin for the engineering service provider. And this was a really breakthrough um, for our customer because um, afterwards, this department lead uh, went to the next department lead and told the story. And then the, the ball just started rolling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, the key steps involved in actually adopting the technology because there are always little friction points, right? So how do you convince someone to actually adopt the technology and um, actually transitioning towards this approach? Yeah, so what we are usually doing, um, so in Zenera, we are not only selling um, our platform. What we are doing then is supporting the customer. So means um, we have a six week onboarding phase, uh, which comes for free. So because we want to really push forward this, uh, this paradigm shift. And in this onboarding phase, we train two, three engineers on the platform, create the first workflows. And at the end of the six week, they can uh, distribute it in the whole department. So um, as a, um, yeah, employees of the department can use these workflows without understanding how Scenario works. Mm -hmm. And then we we are already in the adoption phase. And from one department, we are going to the next department. And at the end, we have, yeah, we brought it to a, to a, a yeah, major um, point where we say, okay, now it makes sense to, to really roll it out in the company. And yeah, but then already the, the mindset shift already happened at this stage. Yeah, I think we should also emphasize that it's really, really nice to see, especially for Scenario, that you see quick, quick um, success, basically, because for some software vendors, the customers might see success within the next six or 12 months. So the ROI is not really visible at first, but you really see quick successes, how you can automate workflows, for example, inside of Scenario. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, um, I mentioned at the beginning, okay, it was two or three years on the um, customer side of Scenario, and that was exactly what I appreciated. So um, I set up some workflows and I had a return of invest in three months in six months. For sure, this was not a return of invest or I didn't save 1 million euros with a, a simple small workflow, but it helped me to um, organically grow um, with my workflows. Super interesting, Tobi. I wanted to go back to maybe the trust building or maybe the, speaking the same language topic, which is if you build a workflow and hand it over to different departments, do people understand what the workflow actually tells me at the end of the day? Um, if you're interested, then yes. So you can open the workflow and I mean, everybody who, do, who did programming in the past knows, okay, if you create a nice code, then there should be comments in it. Yeah. And that's exactly what we do in our workflows or what uh, Sunera is capable to do. So you can add comments to your workflow so that everybody can understand what every single step does in uh, your workflow. How do you see the future with connected engineering? Like, How can people profit from this? I mean, yesterday we had a webinar on cost engineering. But we also talked a little bit about the future, like design to cost, AI, all these kind of things. So where do you see the future of connected engineering, Toby? Yeah, so from my personal point of view, um, I would say it's pretty comparable to what Toyota did some decades ago uh, with lean production. So this connected engineering approach 
will lead us to more efficient developments, to faster development. And at the end, um, faster development means reduce time to market and yeah, reduce time to market always means uh, to a uh, better product market fit. So all in all, we will pay in the future less costs for developing much better products. What would you say are your biggest learnings or maybe the learnings from the engineers when adopting Scenario or maybe using it for the first time? What would you say if you go back and think about when you first used Scenario, what was it like your biggest aha moment? Yeah, so I think that the special speciality of uh, Scenario is really the UX and the UI. And this is also what we always receive as a feedback that Scenario looks much nicer compared to um, the typical engineering tools. So this sounds a little bit awkward because um, at the end we want to engineer um, parts, but um, it's just much more fun <laughs> if you have a, a nice looking um, surface, which is easy to use. It's it's just like, like the iPhone, right? So uh, everybody who has an I iPhone usually has it because it's easy to use, everything looks nice and that's um, the first uh, thing we always hear when someone new starts in Scenario. Mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting. Uh, we, we talked about the UI. Maybe we can talk about the dark mode in the next episode when we have Markus on. <laughs> so let's see what he's going to say. Do. <laughs> <laughs> maybe his wishes. But yeah, I like the analogies. Any maybe closing remarks or how I'd like always to say and some motivating words to the to the listeners. Maybe maybe even trying Scenario for free. It's a 14 days trial, if I'm not mistaken, Toby. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's foreign days. And if I can give all the listeners uh, some homework to do, then I would say, okay, please think about just five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, where do you have a lot of iteration between different disciplines? And that's usually where we as scenario can uh, bring a huge impact to. And I'm pretty sure if you have such a use case, um, it's pretty easy to deliver some value, which leads at the end um, to cost savings in your organization. Amazing. With that, Toby, we can already wrap it up. So if you have any questions to Toby, I'll put a link down to his LinkedIn profile in the description. Also his email address uh, if you want to contact him. And then uh, really looking forward to talk to Markus in the next episode, hopefully about uh, dark mode and some other interesting insights mm -hmm. about the customer journey. So thank you so much, Toby, and hope to see you in the second part in the future. Thank you, Josef. I'm pretty sure we will have a second part. <laughs> Thanks.